Well, I think all of the countries along the coast were part and parcel of the Atlantic, transatlantic slave trade. Um, Liberia as a nation was created much later, but the whole coast was called the Slave Coast. So you can imagine that all of the countries along were somehow part and parcel of what happened. Um, as a result of the Westerners coming into our continent, uh, seeing the valuable things that we had, there are museums created across the world that have artifacts that you won't find on our continent. The first issue was how do we raise money to even take care of what we have? And fortunately, there are philanthropists, there are African millionaires that can begin to look at these issues uh, why should our children go to New York or Washington, D.C. or Paris to see artifacts that actually belong to us? They are our her heritage. We have to begin to find a way to raise the necessary funding to take care of the relics that we have. And I, I, I'm hoping that I'll live long enough to see every African continent um, have its own serious museum that will talk about its own history. And so at that point in time, I think uh, those artifacts should be returned. With respect to Liberia, is that the case you're making, uh, that there are some artifacts belonging to Liberia that have been sent out of the country that ought to be retained? Yes, Liberia has a lot of these artifacts across um, in, in, in universities in America, and I think a time should come that we could actually ask them to be returned. Recently, some women were stripped naked and paraded uh, in the street in Liberia, and you spoke against that. How is your fight for the rights of women to be respected going? And that's just one of the examples of what you will find on our continent, not just in Liberia. Um, the issue of women being disrespected, uh, abused, misused, mistreated, not given the equal opportunities like the male counterparts, it's, it's a very serious issue. Um, a few years ago, we managed to get Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf elected as the first female democratically elected president of Liberia and I believe Africa. And that raised the bar. Uh, girls all around Africa now realize that they can be whatever they want to be. It's not just a story. It's not just an old story of someone that nobody knows. It's a recent story that proves that, again, we have the capacity, we have the potential, that the space must be created. And unless the space is created and more women are brought on board, you'll still have stories like that in, in, in 2019 where you have women paraded naked on the streets. Our laws, uh, the Liberian laws, have banned all of those cultural practices. And to see it still happening in, in, in 2019 shows you that the level of respect, the level of appreciation that citizens and societies should have for women is still not there. Because why would you, if someone is guilty for a crime, what do they say? Take them to court. If you're parading, you, don't, you will never see somebody parading a man naked. I don't care where you are in Africa. It never happens. So why would people think they can do it now? That means we still have a lot of work to do. But do you think you are succeeding in, in this fight? Are, are you succeeding? Well, unless we get the core number of women in governance, it makes it difficult. Uh, in the Liberian Senate, there is only one female left. In 2005, we began with, I think, six or seven. Every election that has taken place over the past 13 years has seen women lose their space. So you now have one woman. What is her voice? What can she do as one individual? It will be noise. Now let's talk about Liberia and some national issues. Um, there have been protests recently. People are not happy about the performance of the government. Uh, some people believe that the fight against corruption, is that fight is not being won. Um, the economy is weak. Uh, and a lot is not being done to create jobs for young people. How is the government fixing these issues? Well, the first thing I can say is that we have laws that protect the civil liberties of people. So it's the right of citizens on our constitution to gather and to raise issues with their government. This could not have happened 20 years ago. So I think we're a little bit more lenient. There's a little bit more uh, leverage that people have to, 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 to stand up and say, we don't like the way things are going. Um, we need to all work together. There are many challenges in our country, economic challenges, um, educational challenges, um, social challenges. All of us as a people must work together because I think working together is the key. 
And when things go wrong, they must be allowed to speak about it, but bring about ideas as to how those things can be corrected. And I think this is the phase of, 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 of Liberia where we are actually working together to make things better for our country. But how are you really fixing the problem? That's my question. How are you fixing this problem? Because there are some who seem to be losing hope uh, and they don't think that the government is doing much uh, to gain much progress. Um, a government who has its two most important resources for example, Liberia, rubber and iron ore. Uh, the market of the rubber and iron ore uh, is very low at this point, and so maybe the funding government will get to do some of the things we need to do also goes low. Government must now put in place new regimes to find new sources of money, whether it's tourism, whether it's creating um, value added to the resources that we have. That plan is, must be put on the table, and everyone must come and see what they can do to help. Governance is not just about the government, it's also about civil society, it's also about citizens. Um, you have the new technology that everyone is raving about, I mean all of the new things that you see coming on board. Someone will go and take plantain leaf, for example, and work with it until they get plastic bowls. You know they're making plastic bowls out of banana leaves. What did that person think about? We have to think outside of the box. We have to create new industries, and that is also the responsibility of civil society. A government will do what it can, citizens must do what they can, but together we'll work it through, and I think people shouldn't lose patience. The talking must begin, uh, the working should also continue, and together we'll get to where we want to be, hopefully in my lifetime.